Well, I'm super pumped to have the guest of honor today, um, Leron Hirschkorn. I'm pronouncing that correctly, right? Yes, you are. Because I heard somebody else pronounce it differently, and I was like, dude, I think I know how this is it's, pronounced. Yeah, it's uh, it's Leron. It's a uh, uh, Le or Leron. It's uh, it's an Israeli name. So in Hebrew, it would be Leron. So the emphasis is on the uh, is on the end, kind of not not on the beginning. Ah, oh, I see. I see. Yeah, because we would be like Liron. Right. Yeah. But that ain't right. Yeah, exactly. The, the emphasis is on is on the back end, but it, it, most of English the emphasis is on the is on the front end. So people end up saying it incorrectly. But st story of my life. Okay, so we're super excited to have Liron. Yeah. I'm sure every single uh, one of you knows who he is. He's uh, ubiquitous in the space. Um, he's a, a voice um, in in especially things like PPC, but overall brand. He's doing so many different things. Um, he is also helping with seller financing. He's got an agency, Incrementum Digital, um, which, you know, I'll just start out by saying if you need help with PPC, for sure go to uh, to Liron Incrementum. He's super, um, I don't know, very hands-on, but also is just cutting edge, just just at the top of his game, um, knows the space very well. Um, you want to say anything else about your, I, I did pretty good, right? You did pretty good. You did a good job selling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah sweet. Um, yeah. I mean, we're, we're helping, we're helping a, a lot of sellers and brands uh, with advertising. And then we, we've taken on recently um, full brand management uh, as well. So we work with some clients also in kind of managing their, their entire, uh, their entire Amazon business. Um, and, um, you know, we do work on the, the creative side as well. Um, so, you know, we can, uh, we can talk, we can talk more about that. I know that's kind of, that's kind of the the focus here, and then you know you and I are working separately right now on revamping our our website so that uh, you know maybe when you visit this uh, a month a month from now uh, our website will will look better um, with some of your video work that uh, you're helping us with. Yeah, so Liron and his team had a <clears throat> an idea to add some video to their uh, agency website, and it's a super. Um, I mean, imagine you know going to a website and having sort of this immersive experience where you're getting to sort of meet people and, and, um, hear the voice of the brand and all these different things. It's, um, it's a smart move and, uh, and it's just, you know, it sort of speaks to the importance of content the importance of, um, how video can be used, how, uh, you know, we speak to our customers and whether that's an agency speaking to their customers or as brand owners speaking to your customers and how, you know, the digital shelf, how we are, um, we are, we are shopping on these devices, on our phones, on our computers. We're not going into stores like we used to, and it'll never be the same. You know, there's this huge upswing of like, um, you know, it's it, the internet, first of all, but then now because of COVID, this huge swing toward e-commerce. Um, it's a very fascinating time and why I wanted to start a podcast around content for e-commerce. And um, and I think, wouldn't, wouldn't you say there's sort of this pivot point? And I, and I was thinking about it, preparing for this. I was thinking about how. With Facebook ads, um, it was like you could kind of put up whatever content on Facebook ads and, it, and you could target it kind of correctly. And the targeting was so powerful that it would work. And this was like, you know, I don't know, five years ago. Yep. Um, and then it became more and more important that your content was actually good. And now the content really, really has to be good. Your targeting really has to be good or you can get eaten alive. Right. The the, the birth of like the Harmon brothers and those guys, you know, the... Um, poopery and just those viral commercials that was around quality creative right yeah really really targeted quality creative and i feel like um i parallel that with amazon where it was like you could put any photos you wanted up there like yeah. a few years ago and make sales right and now we're at this pivoting point where over the last six months and i'd love you to correct me if i'm wrong or see if you feel a different way about it but i feel like the reason this podcast i want to bring it kind of happen now do this now is because um i feel like we're at that point where it's like um, where it was with facebook ads you're going to get eaten alive if you don't have quality content quality photos quality video quality a plus all these pieces of the puzzle are sort of um essential now where they weren't before yeah absolutely and you know we, we we've seen also like a massive shift just in the last year right like in terms of who is the actual seller on amazon right like Basically, you know, it's it's funny. Um, 2019, I um, I spoke at an Alibaba conference in China, and when I landed, um, they had a guy a guy there kind of picked me up uh, from Alibaba, 
and I was talking to him in, in the in the taxi on the way to the hotel, and he said to me, "Yeah, it's like I used to sell on Amazon." He's like, "In 2014, he's like, I would just put products up from China, and it would just sell, right? You just put a product, and it would just sell, right? And I'm sure it wasn't like amazing creative or or ABC or any of the stuff. You right. Put a product up, and it would sell. But what happened from 2012 to 2017 is private label sellers, um, people like us proved that this model works and paved the way for now the big money to come in, right? And it kind of like on any platform, the small, scrappy people start, prove a model, and then big money sees, sees the opportunity comes in. And like in the last year, that's really what's what's happened, right? Uh, the rise of the, you know, sort of the rise of the aggregators, right, has come in, right? The, the Thrasio, who, who is the first one to have massive success with it, and then April 2020, there's a TechCrunch article that says Thrasio raises money valuation at $1 billion. And I know personally, because I had like many calls around that time, people frantically trying to put together teams and figure out how to do this, right? Because it lit a fire under a lot of people who kind of had this idea of brewing. They maybe bought one brand and now decided like, okay, we're going all in, we're, we're raising money. And so now the people you're competing with is not necessarily just that a uh, bootstrapped person starting at five thousand dollars. It's also the big players with big money who understand that it's still, even though a lot of people got started like you know six seven years ago in this space, that it's still really really early innings. Um, that e-commerce is still a small percentage or um, you know uh, of overall retail, and that it's massively growing and. They're willing to invest the money into into these brands now, and so your competition even has changed, you know, over the last year. That brand, um, uh, you know, uh, I remember buying a brand from like a viral launch uh, launch like several years ago, and then then I met the guy who launched a product. It was a toothpaste called um, Cali White. This toothpaste, right? I bought it off viral launch and actually liked as a as like a free product. Really liked the product. Right. Kept using it. Then I ended up meeting the seller who ran the product. And two weeks ago, he's like, hey, just sold my business to Perch, right? Like there's a shift happening, right? These businesses going from the bootstrap guy to the big money guys, and now they're going to come in and they're going to refresh all the creative. They're going to redo packaging. They're going to do branding. They have the people also, they're either they're hiring the people or they have the people, head of branding, head of creative, video, yeah. um, using agencies to really power up these listings. And because they know the playbook is basically, you, you take these listings that are like, you know, a six out of 10 and you make them a 10 out of 10, you immediately increase sales and like they're, they're willing to invest the money. Um, and so the competition that you had a year or two ago is different than the competition you have today, even with the same brands. And so it is kind of a, you know, um, everybody has had to step, everybody has to step up their game, uh, I yeah. think to compete, especially on the creative side, because it's, yeah. it's the one, it's the one like, major piece of leverage that you have, right? There's only like four or five really important things on Amazon. It's reviews, keyword ranking, uh, advertising, the product itself, you know, um, and content yeah. and the listing, right? And it's kind of like yeah. one of the major four or five pillars you have. And if, and, and, and we tell people like, um, we had this major brand um, that was launching a, a brand new line of products. They're in Whole Foods. Um, they didn't have brand registry on Amazon, but they had their launch date for D to C and they, they pushed us really to like, Hey, start advertising. Right. And we kind of told them uh, a month ago, like, we don't really recommend it. You don't have a plus yet. Your listing is not fully done. They're like, no, we have this launch date. Our investors want it, blah, blah, blah. And they launched a product and it was kind of a disaster and they weren't willing to lower their price on Amazon because of their D to C site and whatever. It was kind of a disaster. And I look back and I, and I said to myself, I put, I should have pushed harder on them not to advertise because, or shouldn't even taken it on because like if you're not set up like as good as you could be from the start, um, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't really be running ads. You know, there's, there's a product I sent you to, to do a pro video on. This was an unproven product. We were just launching this product, but we just knew we needed to have an, an amazing video as an, as a great head start. And we launched our product and we were the only one in the space with a video ad. We are selling more than, than competitors and as a new product. And we knew, we're pricing higher. We knew we needed pro video from the beginning. And a lot of sellers are playing sort of the other game. They're saying, when my listing sells well, they'll, uh, then I'll invest in it. And yep. it's That's the right. other way around, right? Like if you don't invest in it, it's not going to sell well. Um, and so yep. you need to have that confidence. And really, it, it is kind of a, uh, 
every, everybody has to kind of step up their game in terms of the creative. There's so many things to unpack there, but, um, you know, you're, you're, you're in total alignment with our thinking as an, as an agency. So butter is our agency. And we're, as Leron, um, just mentioned, we're doing a video for a brand that, um, Leron is, uh, launching. Is it a whole brand? Or are you going to do one product or what's the uh, brand? We're fully managing, we're fully managing that brand. So this was the yeah. second product. Basically we took it on from, from launch. Uh, we launched first product. This was the second product sort of, uh, sort of in, in the line. Yeah. And so he made the choice. Um, I'll just repeat back what I'm hearing is, um, to what we call sort of the perfect listing. So instead of we, and we've done this, you know, Leron, I've got a couple of brands. And so we're experimenting all the time on the brand side. And then also with our clients on the agency side and saying, you know, what do we do? And so there's different products where it's like, we're going to, we're not going to do a plus yet. We're not going to, we're going to, because it's not a competitive space or, um, because it's a pretty unproven product or we, we don't want to invest in it for X, Y, and Z reason. If, um, there's a, a product that we have invested a lot in who we think there's massive upside over, like, we know it's going to be six months. Like if you're going to do a supplement, you know, you've got to, you got to launch for a year to get mm -hmm. enough reviews to even compete. Um, what happens? So you, you either say like, Hey, we're not, we're going to wait and do a plus because of X, Y, and Z reason, or we're going to do the perfect listing. And that's what, that's what you're describing for this launch. You're saying we were like, our strategy was to do the perfect listing. We want, we want to be better than everybody. We want to be a premium price. And what happens is you have higher margins. And so, because I imagine your cost of goods is similar yep. to the competition, yep. right? Yeah. So, so what happens is you have a higher margin. So you have, you can spend more on ads. You can get more, um, you, you can get more aggressive with your ad spend. You can do that video ad. I'm sure that video ad is probably because if there's nobody else in the space doing, it, it's probably doing quite well. Yes. Yeah. It's doing, it's doing very well. I'm going to, I'm going to give it a, a, a quick, a quick look here. Um, you know, while, uh, while we're here, but yeah, I'm pretty sure like out of the gate, that video ad was like a, you know, 20% a cost. And, you know, you're talking about a product that is brand new without, you know, without, um, right. without reviews. Um, and so it's pretty, pretty remarkable to be able to, um, you know, to, to launch, um, out of the, out of the gate. And, um, yeah, when I'm looking at the last, the last 30 days on that, uh, on that video at 25%, uh, 25% ACOS. And I mean, it's such a, I think everybody on this call probably knows that it's, um, it's a, such a prominent spot. Like if you're scrolling on your phone, it's. I don't know if you know this, I'm sure you do, that it's the, you, you scroll through page one and it's just like, it's a huge video ad. It's like, it's un, if it's a cool video, it will be watched. It will get you clicks. I mean, it's just going to be, it's just, it's, I call it the top of funnel thing where it's like, you can even at 25% it costs, it's insane. But if, if you were running that at break even, it would, it's going to be massive benefit. Yeah. Right. It is so much ranking value. Um, and so sort of if you're going to play long term, if you're going to play a bigger game, which Liron's saying, and I agree completely, you kind of have to now. Yep. You kind of have to have a little bit of money. You kind of have to play a bigger game. And you can really, really, really win if you play a bigger game and think long term. But like that kind of thing, if you think about that video ad as a top of funnel ad in your, in your whole Amazon strategy, it's massive because you scroll through page one, it's right there. It's huge. Then you go to page two, your video's on there again. Yeah. There's only one, one video slot for the entire search. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you should be thinking about how, how you want to think about your video when the next iteration of video ad, ads comes out, it's already in beta, which is video ads to storefront, right? That's going to even drive more sales, right? Because now when somebody clicks, it just goes to a listing, you know, your brand, right? You have a lot of related products, right? Or yep. if I'm selling, you know, I'm selling a line of kids toys or, you know, home decor product, That's whatever. Right. And I have one video ad and I can get that massive attention and then send it to a storefront page. Um, that I think is going to, is going to even drive a higher conversion and higher average order sales, you know, value. And you should be thinking really about, um, your storefront. Um, and I, I think not enough people are doing the creative or working on the creative in your storefront, but you know, if you have, if you've invested money in your listings and your a plus, if you've invested money in videos, then you could take all those assets, right, to create like a great looking, a great looking uh, storefront, just utilizing those those assets, um, and it's yeah. well worth it. And you should have at least four 
pages in your storefront too, because now we're seeing these big blocks that are showing up on, on certain brands. Um, seems to be something that's, that Amazon is rolling out or, or testing. Um, but I know from like just the way, you know, I was buying a, a pair of slippers, you know, like a week ago. Um, and just from the way I, I was shopping, I saw one, you know, one listing I was on, on this brand. Then they had these big blocks. I saw another image on the for him thing that looked nicer. I clicked on the end of buying buying the product. Mm. And I know it's just going to drive more conversions and sales by these blocks. And you should really be thinking about uh, video, video to storefront, and how to utilize video and content to create, you know, sort of rich, uh, rich pages in the storefront. That's kind of like a, a mini website. The the iteration beyond that is you'll have followers, people that follow the store with posts and the storefront. And the next iteration is you'll be able to send them some kind of messaging. Um, it's not it's not out yet, but it will be out where you can send. You know, if you go to your store or your post, you'll see that you have followers under your brand. And right. And um, if you're putting out regular posts, you know, you should be building up the, that that following and um, it'll be a huge advantage to people who have built up this following once Amazon rolls out the ability to send messaging. And we don't know what it is, but I imagine coupons or lightning deals or certain things that are coming out, you, um, you know, you'll be able to, to target customers with. And, um, you know, I, I think Amazon wants the brand to be able to communicate, you know, with the customer but they want the customer to be in control. And so this is kind of one way to one way to do it. And more and more of these things are going to come out. So the more content you have, the more you're doing posts and, you know, sending traffic yeah. to your storefront, the more you'll be able to take advantage of that when you have followers. How do you have a strategy for getting followers to, to um, your brand? Like, I that? mean, I wouldn't, is it just driving traffic to the brand page, driving traffic to the brand page and regularly putting out posts? So you know, yeah. the more people that see your post, the more people that engage with them, it's kind of like the way to the way to get followers. Now, I would say the one other way is if you're doing Amazon Live, then you could be directing people to follow the brand um, and say yeah. like, you know, hey, if you if you follow us, you know, the next thing coming from Amazon is the ability for us to, you know, send you coupons and special special prices and discounts. Go go to our go to our storefront and follow the brand. So Amazon Live is kind of one way to you know, be able to directly communicate. And, you know, as I'm talking and I'm thinking like, maybe there should be some kind of, maybe you can get away with some kind of messaging or block of text on the storefront to say, you know, follow, yeah, right. click the follow button to, um, you know, to get special offers in the future. Or some, some Yeah. I bet like you could put that piece of creative that has a little arrow that says, follow us. I, I mean, maybe Amazon doesn't like that stuff, but I bet banner, right. You could do a little yeah. arrow that points to the follow button or something. And, uh, yeah. um, kind of like people doing, Facebook, you know, Facebook group kind of banner like, yeah. that it, that have some kind of call to action. Um, so yeah, good good idea. I I want to I want to point out something. I think you and I are both Gary Vee fans. Yeah, and um, you know how he says, uh, you know, p to pay attention to what I'm doing. Yep. Right. You know how he's always like, if, who cares whatever I'm saying or whatever, just pay attention to what I'm doing. And he, you know, he's got. 15 people on his or 20 people on his, like his own brand team or whatever. And it's like, so that means he's super, super bullish on his own, on building a personal brand. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're like, okay, how can I translate it? And Leron's doing an amazing job. You have a very strong personal brand in this space. But the reason I bring it up is because we, um, you, what I wanted to point out was that you are thinking ahead of Amazon and you're, you're sort of trying to track what Lee Ron is doing is trying to track like what's next for Amazon and how can I capitalize on that? And I think, um, and, and be ahead of the curve and be ahead of the game. And I think you'll find this with super successful, the 1% of, you know, people in the e-com space, this is how they think. And I just want to encourage you all that are listening to take that sort of perspective as like, um, maybe, what is the next thing? Where is Amazon headed? Yeah. And, and kind of like go to the puck. It's, it's going to be ahead of you and you go and you, there's, there's so much to gain. It's like when people move over, like, like, um, Gary Vee moving over to TikTok early or whatever it is. Um, there's so much to gain from that. And you have to be careful because you've done really well on clubhouse. Um, you gotta be careful cause you can't do everything. You gotta make your choices, but you do need to choose things that are ahead um, and, and go for them. And I think, um, and, and some of them are very low hanging fruit. Like for us, Amazon posts is a low hanging fruit because 
we're already doing it for Instagram. Right. So w- all we do is we have a process in place where all those get posted on Amazon posts. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's, um, yeah. If you're, if you're already posting on Instagram, right. You just need to have a process, resize the images, upload, put a caption, you know, wh- whatever it is to, to get it up. Um, you know, and again, if you, if you want to try to identify like, what are some of the other things that are coming? You can also look at certain Amazon programs, like the Launchpad program, gives sellers certain benefits. Well, one of those benefits is they have premium A plus. Um, I think that will be coming to to everybody. Um, and actually, on the vendor yeah. side, I think you need to pay like a massive fee um, to to get that premium A plus. Um, but on Launchpad, it's free. Um, but I think it'll be eventually coming. One of those things is video in the A plus content. There's a certain carousel there yeah. where you can where you can kind of scroll through products. Um, So all those things are things that I think will be coming. And so, again, you want to have another place where you can have video, right, is A+. And so if you think about, like, the investment into into video and how you can repurpose it, right, Um, store uh, video ads on your listing, in your storefront, future A+, content, besides anything you could do, you know, sort of off Amazon, um, and then I think creatively on like how, so, so going back to this brand, the slipper brand, I think it's called rock dove or, or something. If you go look at their, uh, their listing, they have, um, they have a video that's just user generated content. It's pretty amazing. Um, so they use probably one of these services. There, there's a service called Billio. Um, I think it's called Billio dot, dot app that allows you to pay. I think it's like 60 bucks. Um, and essentially they'll send your product, um, to a, to an influencer who's getting it essentially for free. So they're making that, that fee, um, and create, create user generated con- content. You can just compile, you know, some of these videos, edit it into, edit it into a video and just have this amazing, like testimonial for, um, you know, for, for a, a, a video on your listing, or again, something that you can use in video ads. In video ads, you want to be smart about it. You want to have captions or something, right? Because because the, the sound is off by default, so it's a little bit different. But, um, you know, I, I like to, I pay a lot of attention to what I see is happening on Amazon and what brands are doing uh, and try yeah. to think about, you know, how can I, how can I utilize this, uh, you know, or put in place this strategy? Yeah. Um, I want to, I want to sort of highlight that idea about getting sort of nitty gritty about the sponsored video ads. Um I personally, in my own shopping, um, uh, notice that I don't turn on the, the audio, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And why, why, why would you really, um, unless there's somebody talking and you're really interested in the product and you want to, okay, I, I want to listen to this. Um, but you know, for the most part, I'd say 80% of the time I don't turn on the sound. I mean, me personally, because I own an agency, I'll turn it on yep. because I want to watch the video to see yep. But as a shopper, when I'm just shopping, I don't. And so uh, when we think about creating that content, um, we have a few things at Butter that we like to think about. First of all, you got to see the product right away. Um, I saw one earlier today, I think it was, or yesterday, um, where it was like a commercial. And it started out storytelling or whatever. And it's like, God, this isn't really the right, you know, it, the product wasn't in there. Yeah. It's not the right platform for that. You know, I'm not sitting here watching content. I'm shopping. And, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm in a hurry. Yep. I'm not, I, I want to find the best one as quickly as possible. So I think for a sponsored video ad, you want it to be, you want to see the product right away. So we know we're going to learn something about this product. It's about this thing that I'm sh- searching. You know, we know exactly, right? And then it shows something in 3D, right? It's like either it's being, it's being activated, you see it in motion, you, you get text that you read that shows you the benefits. Um, and then you get to see it in your life, the sort of aspirational, that moment of like, oh yeah, this, my life would be better because I have this in my life, that kind of moment. So those three, those are the three things that we think about in your experience. Do you have other like sort of thoughts that you've seen working? Have you, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm, one, I'm surprised continuously by how many big brands I see that are not getting it right. You know, um, I search for a lot of keywords, just like in co- you know competitive niches, and where where some of our clients on, and you know, I look at like face cream, and I see a L'Oreal um, video ad, um, and it's it's like their TV commercial that they took and they they put on you know they put on Amazon, yeah. and it's a woman talking and moving and like you 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 don't just get straight into the product and again the sound is off by default so um and again i imagine that to some extent it's working well for them because the they have the the brand social proof and then they have the the price and the reviews all next to it right but 
um, it could probably work even better if they had something that cut, you know, right, right to the product. So, yeah, I mean, I agree with you on, on, on all that you, you want to have captions on the screen with text. Um, yeah. I know it's something you, you do as well in, 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 in your videos. Um, yeah. you want to show the product right away. Um, and I think sort of like ideal timeline is somewhere between like 15 and 25 seconds, right? Um, yep. Amazon allows you up to 45 seconds, but again, like you said, people are in a hurry. They want to get the basic, you know, kind of, um, kind of feel for the product. And then I think there's potentially different use cases on how you can make something more interesting, right? Like if you're selling a supplement, there are a lot of people that will do these slideshow kind of things, but like, uh, if you're selling a protein powder, you can have video of like, you know, you know, how to, how to make the most amazing green smoothie. Right. And then have step one and have some text on it and show and show, show using the product and make it somewhat educational because how much are you going to be able to kind of show, um, you know, show about the product, then maybe you have some of the ingredients and some of the benefits on the, on the screen, but like think creatively about what, what people would want to see with this product that could be, like you said, either and entertaining, educational, informative. Um, and you probably want to have, you probably want to have kind of aspects of, of a few of those if you can, or if it makes sense, uh, if it makes sense, um, you know, for the product, or if you have, if you have a, a face cream, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, the L'Oreal nighttime routine, right? Like if there was a video about the L'Oreal nighttime routine, it would show a woman putting on the product and then it would give you like step one, do this, step two, do, do that. Um, you're, you know, sort of educating and capturing the attention. And I, I think the biggest thing you want to do is you want to, you want to, you want to stop the scroll, capture attention, sell the click, right? And then drive them to the listing and the person can see more. It doesn't need to have, I see videos that have too much text, too small text. The text has to be yep. big. It has to be readable. Yep. I think in general, you know, creative on Amazon, when you're looking at a product and you look at your packaging, you, you almost have to put it like, you know, this far away from you, right? To see, can you read the product, right? Like there's yeah. so many products that I see there just have like super small text on the packaging and it wasn't really designed with Amazon in mind, yep. right? Uh, totally. And I think that's a major competitive advantage to sellers because there's so many products. You look at a lot of different categories, like grocery, for example, right? Most of the products on Amazon we're on a retail shelf elsewhere first, you know, if they're in that category. Yep. And if you're coming in competing, you can create packaging, creative, everything that's geared, like you said, to the, the, the digital shelf. Um, I heard somebody say uh, on Clubhouse Room, um, like last month, like people don't buy products, they buy pictures of products, right? And if you sort of think about yeah. it that way, they're not buying the product, they're buying this image, right? And the better the image you can kind of portray, um, of what this product is and what it does, the more perceived value you can create, the, uh, you know, more demand you can create for the product. I think the aggregators understand this and they see there's a place where they see one of the major opportunities is they buy the, they, they buy these brands that are doing well, but have no, do not have optimized content. And maybe there's other aspects of their company that aren't optimized either. Maybe they don't have enough cash flow to grow, go be aggressive or whatever it is, the different pieces. But I think, you know, you and I have talked about that um, Angry Orange story before from Thrasio, where they just upgraded the content of this one brand. And I'm going to talk about this story every podcast because I it it just, you know, it it just speaks to the power of just upgrading content, just that piece. So, you know, there's, there's podcasts about all the different strategies on Amazon. And this one is specifically, we're trying to focus the conversation on, on these kind of creative solutions. And, but it, but it's not, it's not a little piece. We, we did a, we did a, um, a split test. We did a case study with a brand where we upgraded all their content from you know, their nine listings mm -hmm. and literally, you know, the entire brand increased conversion rate by 25% for the entire brand. I mean that that in their case it it really it added five hundred thousand dollars to their bottom line. I mean it's Crazy. it's 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 huge. And I mean if you see like Perch or Thrasio or whoever these guys, they're literally like we can buy this company. It's like a distressed asset that just needs a little bit of polish yep. and they do better photos and better better video. And it's like five thousand bucks or ten thousand bucks to upgrade all this stuff. And then suddenly, so so for your video, I can't remember how much the budget was, maybe five grand or whatever. Yep. We, that, that thing has probably paid for itself within a month or two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, um, yes, it, it, it definitely has. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying to see what the, what the. Yeah. What, what the actual numbers are. Yeah. What the, 
um, you know, what the, what the sales are, but yeah, definitely, definitely has already made, made, made the money back. Um, you know, for- yeah, because if you don't have that video, then your ACOS is, is higher doing other things. And I mean, you know, video ads are such a massive thing and they will be f- for a while. Like I think it's, it's getting more competitive in certain spaces, but if you can find like a product, like, like Leron is found there where you don't have competition in the video space. Which you know, there's a bunch. There's a bunch of a bunch of keyword searches that don't have video, um, or very they have very poor video. So, so I would recommend everybody if you're going if you want to go to animoto.com or whatever those places and do one of those slideshows for sure, do it because that placement is so strong. Yeah. Um, if you, you know, if you want to, if you find some videographer to make a custom video for you and you can do it for a thousand bucks, you know, I would do that as well. The, the, what Leron did, which was smart was say, I want to make this like Epic from the beginning. And he has backing, he has some financing or whatever, but we've, we've worked with sellers who are like, okay, we've been going for like, you know, six months and I can tell it's going well, I'm happy to, I want to do this. And so they revamp their whole thing. And, um, you know, it, it, the, I'm sorry. Yeah. And, and, you know, you mentioned like, you know, there's, there's other conversations about like the tactics and, and other strategies on, on Amazon, but the truth is that you shouldn't implement any of that until you're listing, like why implement a ranking approach or a ranking strategy when your conversion rate is 10 and you could, it could be 25 or it could be 20, right? Like your, your likelihood of actually sticking that ranking initiative right. or any, you know, or your advertising strategy or like anything that you're going to put in place is just going to work better. Um, the foundation should really be, you know, a uh, well-optimized listing, great copy, images. Um, and, you know, I would say like, from my perspective, um, I think copy should be very much focused on SEO and images and everything else should be focused on selling, right? Like, yeah. like stu- stuff, the title with keywords, right? Like you need to know yeah. how Amazon works. Um, I wouldn't write it for like, I wouldn't utilize the space for like the best words that might convert somebody because like you need, you need them to, you need the listing to be discoverable in the first place and then use the images uh, and everything else to sell the product. And again, I think that's like, a, I, I think it's a misconcept for a lot of people, you know, I'll see an image and it's just an image of a product. There's no text, there's no infographics. Like you, you're, you know, you're, it's valuable real estate that you're not maximizing, right? It's like having, you know, if you had a store in Times Square, but like the store was like super messy and, you know, you're paying like this expensive rent for Times Square, but like, you're not, but like, if your store only looked a little bit better, you, you'd be able to drive like so much more sales, but like, you're not willing to invest in better shelving, right. To like, or to organize the store. Um, and so I, I really think like foundationally the content should be the first thing you focus on and then everything else should come behind it. Yeah. Do you know the book, the one thing? Yes. Jeff Woods. Yeah. Yeah. So he basically, you're, you're sort of repeating what he says there. It's like the, what is the one thing that you can do that would make everything else easier or unnecessary? And there's certain pieces of the puzzle, you know, first of all, your one thing needs to be developing a great product, yes. right? That, without that, you're, you're not getting nowhere. Yep. Then you have to have keywords. You have to have keywords that you have to, you know, stuff the keywords like Leron was saying, you have to do really good keyword research, but then it's like, you know, you skip ahead to, you know, a uh, to PPC or whatever, you're going to waste so much money. Or you're like, why, why isn't this? I got all the keywords here. It's indexed. It's like that, that next one thing where you're like, that will make the rest of the pieces easier is having a really dialed in listing that has incredible content that really converts. So if you're, if you're at a 5% conversion rate or whatever, we have products at 40% conversion rate, you know, or 50, it's like, it's insane. And just think of the, about the difference. Like it, it's, PPC becomes so easy. Yeah. Yeah. Everything, everything. I mean, when, you know, when you're sending traffic and you can convert, there's, there's only two things for any online business, right? Like there's traffic and conversion, like for, for, for any business. And, um, that's really the name of the game, the name of the game on, on Amazon. And, you know, if you can spend more money than your competition, because you're converting better, then you're going to win. You're going to sell more. You're going to get reviews faster. You're, you know, everything will just be, like you said, be much, much, much easier. Um, you know, if you're able, if you're able to do that, unfortunately, again, I think, I think sellers at times, you know, uh, they want to see the results first or they're just not willing to, 
make that investment because maybe, maybe they don't have they don't have the confidence. But like I think, like you said, um, everybody has to kind of step up their game on the you know on the creative front and and really like in every aspect, like in, in your Amazon business, like operationally, your shipping, like you just have to optimize every part of the. Yeah. I think now in order to um, in order to really have massive success, especially if you do want to sell you know, a million, two million, ten million dollars. You know, if you want to build a big business, um, you you have to go into markets that are competitive. You can't go into, you know, super niche markets and have a five million dollar business. You have to go into competitive markets. And those competitive markets have people that are willing to spend. We we see it because we run these, you know, we run launch and rank campaigns for for clients and they're investing Twenty five thousand dollars, thirty thousand yeah. dollars. They're investing yeah. like serious money into building up reviews and, and ranking, and that's that's your new competitors today. Yeah, and 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 what Leron's saying here is that twenty five, thirty thousand um, dollars, that's a big investment to launch a product, and so to spend that extra three thousand or extra five thousand or extra two weeks or whatever to actually have that listing ready for that is going to is is going to increase the percentage chance of that launch working by a, a lot, but also is probably going to decrease the cost of that launch. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I had somebody um, <clears throat> approach me this week with a, with a skincare brand. They were referred to me, and they the guy said to me like, you know, I've been trying like Amazon for like the last four years, and I kind of just like I I put in one hundred thirty grand, and uh, basically haven't made any money, um, and mm. his A cost now is like five hundred percent. I'm like whoever's taking your money now and running and somebody is taking their money now and running their ads. I'm like, they're doing you a major disservice. Like your packaging is not ready for Amazon. Uh, your listings are not ready to, to run, to run ads. And they've invested small amounts of money again, you know, 5,000 a month trying to run ads and this and that. And like, instead of really like upfront, if they would have spent that money upfront four years ago in that niche, they would have been yeah. it by now with thousands of reviews. Instead they have 55 reviews in oh my gosh. eye cream product, right? Like there's just no way. I'm like, I mean, you need, you know, if you want to go compete in this product, you 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 probably need at least 50, a 50 grand budget to go, you know, and really develop it, redo the listing, redo your packaging, redo things the right way. Yep. I, honestly, like I won't even, I won't take your money unless you have the budget to go like do this because you're going to, you're flushing money down the toilet, right? Like at this point you, you, you have to either, in, you know, for this niche, right? You're talking about like beauty, and eye cream and vitamin C serums and like the, the, the most cutthroat <laughs> competitive area areas on, on Amazon, like the opportunity is great, right? You could build a business and have repeat customers and there's high margins, um, you know, in, in, in health and beauty. But, you know, if you don't approach it the right way, like you're literally flushing money down the toilet, you know, and there's a lot of people, a lot of people that start out that way and I think don't have success on Amazon because they try to do it on a bootstrap budget and they, they'll invest five or 10 grand and then it doesn't work because, because they didn't have the right investment to begin with and because they didn't do it right, um, you know, from, from the beginning. And again, the foundation really is like, you do need a product that, a, a product that's going to get four and a half, five stars, right? Like as, as a foundation. Yep. Yeah, and we have some products in my in one of my brands where it keeps going below four and a half stars, and we're just fighting and fighting and fighting, and it becomes this, and, and it's making it's probably that one product line will make us a million dollars this year in just you know top line, but it's a struggle because the the quality we just we just can't, and we keep iterating on the product to make it better and better and better every time we're trying to, but somehow it just keeps getting bad reviews. And that kills you, man. Yeah. That kills you over time yeah. because you get that. There's something I can't, you know, it's, it's amazing how much a one star review hurts. Okay. Um, you know, compared to like the, the math, if you do the math on what a five star review means for you, if you're at four and a half stars and what a one star, oh my gosh, it's brutal. Yeah. So yeah, having, having really quality, but by the way, having really good photos and videos and content that explains your product really helps you not. Uh, decrease the amount of bad reviews because people really understand the product they're buying. So what one, one product we have has a, um, it, so pe people are returning it because they think it's too large. Mm -hmm. So we launched it and it's doing super well. We got, we have five stars, we have five star rating, but we've seen, we've noticed 10, 10% review rate, um, which is a lot higher than what we're used to. And they almost all say too large. So what we're going to do is revamp the content 
to make sure that it is very clear that this this thing I just wanted to curse. This thing is huge. Yeah. It's bigger than you think, baby. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Go in and make sure that second image is like super clear. Even maybe we put a badge on the first image in some way or like a tag in Photoshop, add a tag that says like extra large, don't miss it, <laughs> you know? But right, content can do that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, um, that same brand of the the second product that I sent you, the, the first product, the first product is a is a wallet um, for, it's an iPhone wallet for the iPhone 12. So it, it has a magnetic, it's a Mac called the MagSafe wallet. And the return rate has been like 10% on it. Um, and one of the things we've done and working on trying, trying to see, is it a product quality issue or people buying the product, not fully understanding what it is because the wallet right. works either directly on the back of the iPhone. It sticks to it cause it's magnetic or you need a MagSafe case. If you don't have a MagSafe case, then if you're buying a regular case that's not a MagSafe case, then it doesn't have magnet in it, and then the magnet's not strong enough be between the two, and it falls off. And what we've done is we've revamped the second image, A plus content, to just show like we have this big like green check, like MagSafe wallet check, non-MagSafe wallet, like big X. We've revised the content essentially based on the customer feedback. And that's again, yep. you know, the content you start with is not necessarily going to be the content you end off with yep. based on customer feedback, based on reviews, based on you know, what people are telling you about the product that they, that they like and that they don't like. And you should be paying attention to that to um, yeah. see how best to modify the content and potentially be able to lower your review rate if you do have your return rate, if you do have uh, an issue like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, dude, I think there isn't, there's no, there's no place anymore where you can sort of sit back and rest. It's like a competitor comes in and starts changing things and then you got to upgrade and, or you gotta, you gotta look at how'd the launch go? What did our first 30 reviews look like? What did they say? Where, why are we getting returns? Just like what Lee Ron's saying. And then go back and really tell that brand story. I mean, tell that product story again, sort of refashion it. Sometimes it's a big adjustment. Sometimes it's not, sometimes it's kind of small, just like adding up that, you know, making it more clear that it's large, but like, I think that's very important and something that people No, this is not easy, right? It's not easy anymore. And, um, it was easier. It really genuinely was five years ago. It was easier. It's not easy anymore, but you can, there's so much volume, there's so much volume that it's like, it's, it's, it's becoming so because there was a lot less volume before, but it was easy, quote unquote, like you could make money, but now there's so much money to make that it's worth the pain. Mm -hmm. You know, but, but anyway, so going back to, so upgrading your content, as you go, you check out the reviews, you make fixes, you, you really make sure you're telling the brand story so that somebody searches, you know, beach bag and really, what are they looking for? And really understanding, oh, they're looking for this and this and this. And so we feature that right up front in our video and our thing and our thing. And like, um, you know, that, that sort of thing, like eking out another 5% conversion rate or 10% conversion rate as you go, um, really pays huge dividends. And also understanding what keywords are actually converting. So I'm sure this is part of your brand management, part of your PPC. It's like, okay, here after the launch or whatever, or six months into the product, you go back and you say like, okay, what keywords are actually doing the business here? Yep. You know? Yep. And adjusting the product to make sure it's it's articulated that way through the content. Yeah, absolutely. And and there's so many more things even even on the ad side that just give you more and more data. Um, there's now a report that's in beta um, called the search term impression uh, impression uh, report, mm. and it actually tells you for a given keyword what percentage on the ad side of the overall impressions for that keyword you're getting and where you rank. So, for example. One of my main keywords showing me I'm getting like 12% of all impressions and a number three. So if my ACOS is good and I can push it higher, I can go push the bids up higher. I can go use, I can go do top of search placement. Um, I found a keyword today. I was looking at the report today on, on one of my products and I found a keyword and I see I'm like number 27 and I don't even have that keyword in my, it came off a phrase match and I don't even have that keyword in my campaign, right? Um, I'm not yeah. like showing, you know, I'm not targeting that keyword specifically. It's very targeted to my product and I can go in and, and you can see, so Amazon's even really kind of showing you like where you stand among other brands for like rank on impression. And if you really want to own a particular keyword or own in kind of a niche keyword, yeah. you can utilize these things to say, where do I want to push harder? That is more relevant to my product. That is going to be the exact thing 
you know, that um, that somebody is searching for. So like Amazon's giving you just more and more data today that you can that you can utilize. I mean, that's the other thing. Like five years ago, you didn't really have all these marketing levers that you have today. Storefronts, totally. video ads, deals, totally. you know, uh, placement you know, placement bidding, like all these things that, that Amazon's giving you. So um, it is more competitive, but it, like, like you said, the, the pie is also a lot bigger, um, especially yeah. with COVID, um, you know, and it's growing uh, really fast, which, which is why, you know, which is why, like, I mean, institutional money is, you know, a bunch of smart people, right? Like they're, yeah. they're seeing the opportunity. They just didn't, they didn't have enough data in 2013 to, you know, basically, place place big bets uh on the, uh, you know on Amazon the the third party sellers kind of had to prove prove the model first yeah. um you know and then prove that at that time somebody with 10 grand can can build a million dollar plus plus business which is pretty pretty incredible yeah you know it's interesting how i i look back at my the beginning of my time on Amazon and i always understood content cuz i'm a content guy and so I did it myself. And I think don't be afraid to go out there. If you understand how to take a photo or whatever, and you can find somebody to retouch it and like, you, you know, do your best and get, get, get good content. And there's resources, there's resources where, um, have you worked with some agencies that are, you know, more like a thousand dollar video type thing, or, or do you guys do that in house? I think, right. Some of yeah. us, and then, and then also photographers and, yep. and, um, do you do all photography in house, or do you do photos and then you guys do that? We're bringing, we're starting to bring more, more of it in house, right? Yeah, but we've we've used both uh, in and and agencies. What would you how speak to like working with agencies and like, um, you know, on the creative side, right? So like, have you had gr- good experiences? Have you had some bad ones? Have you? Um, yeah, definitely. You know, like what are you looking for? We've, we've had stuff done by some agencies where like text on video is misspelled. Right. I mean, just like, you know, just like stuff that you can basic, you know, they're giving, they're giving that kind of stuff to some, you know, somebody offshore. They're not, and, and which is fine, but they're not overseeing the work, checking it. They're not creating creative briefs. They're, they're, you know, just not. And then like, and, and that's actually in, in some cases, that's what's driven us to say like, forget this we could do it better we're just building how yeah. we have we have control um and that's kind of sometimes driven us to um do things more in house for like the the brands you know the brands that we um that we that we fully manage and then built out processes to to do it better and and again i have more have more um you know uh more control over it so um i definitely think that there are you know there are all kinds of levels out there. Um, I, I want to address your point also to, to say like doing it yourself. You know, I have a, a friend of mine. He has a, um, you know, I think this year he'll do close to $20 million across Amazon and Shopify. And um, his video for his product is him in the video, right? And it's him and it's in his warehouse. And it's like, um, here, you know, thank you so much for, for you know, for coming to our listing. Uh, I want you to show you, here's our customer service team behind me here answering phones. And because and, he's got like a, you know, $200 plus kind of technical product requires sometimes customer support, et cetera. Um, and he's like, here's our customer service team. And this is one of our three warehouses in the U.S. where we're a U.S. owned company and we stand behind our products, blah, blah, blah. All his competitors are like Chinese sellers for the, for the most part. Yeah. And he's like super differentiating himself by like being like, hey, I'm the founder. I'm here. I stand behind our products. Here's like a real warehouse, real customer service people. Um, and so there's all kinds of things you need to do. And it, it doesn't necessarily need to cost, you know, $5,000 right. to, to have, a, to have a, a, a creative. It's just the, the idea of how do I want to position my brand? And, and again, for this product that's technical, like showing the customer service people, showing the warehouse with the products, showing, you know, your U.S., you know, your U.S. based business. You can, you're buying a $200 product. You want to know if you have a technical issue, you can call up and get support. Those are kind of important things for for the customer, um, and they're really driving that with with their with their video, right? So a lot of times it's not like it's just thinking about what do I want to what do I want to present, and the best yeah. way to go about it, right? There's the there's the concept that like the, the the product I sent you for video, I knew like I really needed to show why the product was better, and I needed to have sort of call outs in the video and like why the product is better. And and it's also kind of a cool factor. Yeah. Like that product has a cool factor, right. which a lot of products don't. Yeah. And it's like you, 
you don't get a cool factor with like a kind of mom and pop right. video. So, so your friend who's, who's showing, he's showing off his authenticity and he's, and he's seeking trust. And by the way, uh, you know, uh, an authentic video, even if it's shot on your phone, does that better than a professional commercial if, if that's your objective. Right. And, and it sounds like for that one, because he's, he's figured out that that is a differentiating point in that market for him and for his product in the business. So like I have, uh, one of my brands is a home goods, home goods brand. And I literally just grabbed an iPhone and I have a video professional video production company and I've grabbed an iPhone with nice lighting yep. and I talked and I said, Hey, I'm the brand owner. And my wife and I started this business because we wanted home goods for our home that, um, you know, sort of brought our family together and things that help you connect with your family. And it was just an authentic story. And I just did it like that because it would feel like, oh, we're kind of a big company. We're kind of corporate if we had some professional looking video thing. Right. And so, but if you want your product like Lee Ron did for his product launch to look super badass, you have to have a video that looks badass, you know? Yeah. Or else, you know what I mean? And, and you, cause you want it to look like a sort of Apple commercial ass. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yes. Yeah. And it was a case for Apple headphones. Right. So like you, you want it, you want it to look, you want it to look really cool. But so, you know, sort of a great starting point is for you to take a pen and paper and write down, like, what do I want my video to show? What kind of feel do I want it to be authentic? Do I want it to look or, you know, organic? Do I want it to be user generated content? Do I want it to be pro high end cool factor? Right. Like what do I want the story yep. of, of the, you know, of the video to be and, and portray the message. And, and I guess that comes back to sort of like, branding right what is the what is the what is the emotion i want somebody to to feel you know i think i heard the definition of branding it's like you know what people say about your brand right like what people say about your brand when you're not around right like you have this problem, yeah. or like how people think about your brand or what feeling it, it kind of gives them is all should all be part of your you know your brand you know identity um, and again, I think, I think Amazon sellers need to start thinking more and more, um, about that, especially as, as storefronts become more popular customers know you can click now and go to the storefront and have this feel. And, you know, more of your competition is going to have that mini website within Amazon and people are going to start shopping that way too. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and we, we have videos on our brand store on Amazon now, and it's very strong. We get a lot of comments about our brand in like seller messaging or emails with, you know, through many chat follow-ups or whatever, right after the fact, people were like, oh man, I love your brand. And I bought it first on Amazon and we have insert cards that sort of lead to our website or whatever. And then they come back and they say, I bought first on Amazon. Now I'm buying from your website because I want to support you guys. And, you know, you can really, really do all of that stuff and then send them back to Amazon for a promo or a launch or whatever, right? You get them on your email list and then they can help you launch the next product or, you know, all those things are, advanced strategies that are very important. And you should be thinking about that before you create the product, right? Like, uh, I mean, there's, you know, I saw, um, actually today I, I interviewed, um, I interviewed somebody that works for a company. They own about 10 brands. Um, and he's their like branding guy, create head of creative branding guy and interviewed him to, to potentially hire him, um, in my agency, because we want to be able to talk to our clients about like, do you have a brand identity? Like, do you, you know, yeah. do you, like your packaging should be cohesive or across the brand like a lot of sellers kind of like launch one product then they launch the next one with totally different packaging yep. right like um and he showed me some of the products he's working on like one of them was like just candles right like but like they were so cool right like the the, mm. the material holding the candle was really cool the colors were really cool they had these like shiny metallic like just like super cool products and you can go into this category that's competitive but just make like some really nice designs, really nice branding, really great packaging. And you've differentiated your product and, you know, something I would buy without, you know, not needing 2000 reviews just because it's different. Right. So you're not getting yep. on the same product, the same reviews, the same prices as, as everybody else. Um, and so a lot of this stuff you should be thinking around your, really it should start with your product development, right? Like the look and feel of the product, feel yep. the brand. And then, then that should translate over into, into the creative on your listing. And by the way, like you build a real brand, that's what these aggregators want to buy. You know, they'll, they'll buy single product companies or whatever as well. But like, um, buyers, brand buyers are looking for brands, you know, with a cohesive story and people coming back and buying more and, you know, looking for the next launch and, and, um, yeah, there, the, there definitely will be more, 
Um, I know because I speak to some of these aggregators are clients and some of them I just speak to because, um, you know, I've gotten a chance to meet them and some of them will want only buy brands, like meaning if you don't have sort of like, um, if you don't have, like, for example, I sent, um, one of somebody I knew wants to sell their brand. They have like th- their brand is just salt and pepper shakers. They have like 10 products. Right. And the, the, com- the, the company I sent, I sent it to was like, we would consider this because they're just in this niche, but had they had like 30 different, just random kitchen products, we probably wouldn't go for this. Right. They're kind of in, in this niche. Mm-hmm. So we would consider it, but they're heavily looking at brand. And if you have it and then there's other aggregators that don't care, right. They'll buy 10 different products, but you just have less competition. You, you have, you have, you have less competition for that brand versus a brand that has a cohesive look, a brand look, products that make sense together. Um, and again, with where Amazon is going with storefronts and sponsored brand ads that show similar products yep. and like all, all these different marketing things, um, brand will be more, more, you know, valuable as opposed to like when we started, you just launched whatever product you found that like was kind of like a good opportunity sellers would launch. But I, I think a lot of that is shifting and you'll just have a lot more you'll be able to get a higher multiple when you've built a brand because more people will be interested in, in acquiring that because they also want to take it off Amazon. Right. And again, if you have like yep. 10 random products, much harder to be able to take and put on a website that makes sense to be able to, to take it off Amazon and put on social media. Um, so it it just becomes a lot more valuable when you're really thinking about like building, building a, you know, a brand as opposed to just products. And the only way to build a brand is to have photos and videos yeah. that are, telling that brand story, right? Like, like there isn't, they're not walking into your store, you know, and they're, and they're not picking up your product in the store. It's, it's through, uh, you know, it, it's, um, for people to skimp on, you know, that, like you're saying, I, I think you, you said earlier in, in the podcast that, um, you were on clubhouse last night and someone, what did they say about, they uh, said that um, people don't buy products. They buy, they buy pictures. Yeah. They buy the image of the product. Yeah. This is literally the only thing that this is, this is the product as far as they know. And you're competing against other pictures of other competitors. Like it, it is, it's the photos and the videos. It's that, that's what you have. And, um, and if you go, if you go, if you shift your mindset to that, right. Who's got the best picture of this product, right? Don't think about, you know, I talked to this guy with the skincare products, right. And like the reality is like, people who don't understand it and it's not his fault. He just doesn't understand online marketing, but you know, he said to me, but you know, I have all my skincare products are third party tested. I'm like, who cares? You have 55 reviews and other people have 20, 25,000 reviews, right? Nobody's, yeah, right? Nobody's even considering the product in the first and the packaging is terrible. Like, you know, you got to first have that before anybody cares about anything else about, about the product. Right? Like, it just, none of it matters, right? Like you can have, or, or people will tell, people will launch a product and it won't have reviews and they'll price the same as everybody else. And they're like, they're not getting sales. And I'm like, you got to be more aggressive on your pricing when you launch, but like, but my quality is better, but like, nobody knows you don't have any reviews, right? Like you have to think about, you know, you have to think about it from the shoppers, you know, standpoint. And if you think about like, who's got the best images of their products, you know, the best A plus of their products, the best creative of, of, cause that's what people are buying. They're not actually, you know, they're not actually touching and feeling and seeing, seeing the quality. So it is about really the, the, the creative and, and the, and the social proof is ultimately what, what you really need. And if you change your mindset to think about, I need to have the best images, not the best product. I mean the, that, yes, you have to have good qual- product quality, but I don't need to have the best product because nobody knows until they actually buy it. If the product yeah is and having reviews is good but like who's got the best images of the product right and i mean there's small things that we work on right like even like the size of your image right the size of your main image like there's some products you look at and they look like they're like almost touching you they're so big yeah and then you look yeah. at other they're almost in 3d they're almost in 3d right and you look at other products and they look kind of small right like all these things are things that you need to look at your product in search results how does it look compared to everybody else you know, what is your packaging? Like all these things in, in certain categories. I mean, obviously like supplements, beauty, like packaging is so important. Um, you really need to pay attention to all these things in order to get people to buy. And when people aren't buying, you need to think about, look at your product and the results and like, ask yourself, like, would you buy this product? And, and then go back and look at the last 10 products you bought on Amazon and look at the reviews, look at the images of those products. And like, 
you know, you'll see yourself that you're, you're probably for the most part, I've bought products that have over a hundred reviews that, you know, like that you need to get to a yep. certain point before really people will consider your product and you need to push through that first kind of launch phase in order to get there. A lot of people I think give up before they even get there. And, you know, you, you can circumvent that with really good content. Like Leron is saying about his headphones is like, or the case is like, if there's certain marketplaces, certain marketplaces, and that's a new marketplace, right? It's a new, it's a new niche, yep. but like there are certain ones and we've had this recently too, with a, a product that we were surprised just took off before we got reviews and we do perfect listings for everything. We we're done with trying to mess around. We're like, let's do every, everything's got to have a perfect listing to launch it. And we're, the upfront cost pays for itself. Um, you know, but it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's huge. Do you, do you use, um, do you use split tests? Do you, and are you, I, I'm, I've become obsessed with split testing mm -hmm. and, um, my team. So we almost have an entire person. That's her entire job is split tests. Um, you know, we have 150 products or whatever. So there's a lot going on, but it's like split test the image, the split test, the keywords, split test, test this, test this, test this. And she's just running them constantly and then tracking and giving the results to the team. Um, do you, do you, are you running things like that? And we do, we, how do you manage it? We do a lot of it on the, on the ad side because it's a little bit, a little bit easier than, than like, let's say right. images. so much data. Yeah. Here. And, and data. Um, so for example, like sponsor brand video, ideally we have kind of like two versions of the video and we test, we test one against the other, um, sponsored brand ads, you know, you have different components there. You have the headline, you also have the custom image, uh, really important. Like if you have a great lifestyle image, right. That's gonna, that's works really great for, for sponsor brand, custom image beta. So testing out the images there, testing out headline copy, we A B test, you know, between landing pages and storefront. So we are testing a lot of it. A lot of it is on the ad side. Um, yeah. I, I, in an ideal world, we would, we would do more AB testing, right? Because I mean, Amazon's opening that up, right? Yeah. They, so you can already, you can already split test a plus within Amazon. So it, even if you're like doing something easy, swap out the banner or whatever, right? Like do something easy and, and test it. But you're, you're right that every video should, you should, you should have your, your agency or whoever makes your video do two different beginnings. Yeah. Right. Just to start, start with a different shot or like with a little bit of a different vibe. And then you'll see Amazon will tell you the winner pretty easily. And that makes a lot of sense. Like with sponsor brand video, just, just change up the beginning because again, the goal there is really to stop the scroll. Right. And so it's yeah. really that beginning part that's going to grab, grab the attention. Uh, and by the way, yeah. dude, the, the split test, split tests always, they always confound me because I always think I know. Like whenever I do pick or whatever, and I do these two images and I'm like, oh my gosh, they, they didn't even know what the product was or, you know, there's something about it that, you know, comes to light. It's just so fascinating. And like, you know, it's like you do your best, you, as a brand owner, um, as a content creator, you do your best. So like, I think this is, this is cool. This is, this is going to be great. Here's two really cool versions, but you don't know. It's like Pixar, right? I always use this as an example. Pixar, they test their, their movies over and over and over in front of real people and they see where they laugh, they see where they cry and they adjust and they tinker with it for a year or two. That's why Pixar movies are so good. And so we use that as sort of a model. It's like, you know, you don't, you don't, nobody knows there's this, there's this expression in Hollywood. I came from, you yeah. know, Hollywood filmmaking and all that. Um, there's an expression that nobody knows anything. You're, you're just guessing it's a, you're guessing and you go out and you split test. And so let's, let's not be arrogant to think that we know, we know, we know, we don't know. We don't know. Sometimes products I think are going to do amazingly well. Don't. Right. And you can like eke out a profitable product in, 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 a, in a lot of spaces because you understand the market, but like sometimes they just take off. Right. And, but it's like, there's so much split testing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, the, the more, um, the more you could do that, um, you know, the more you can kind of move some, some of it, like Amazon is kind of a game of inches, right. Or like one, yeah. right. Like the more one percent iterations you, you can make and, and make improvements. Um, and honestly, I've seen like the best people that I work with, the best brand owners that I work with, um, continue, they do not set, they're just not satisfied, right? Like the creative can look amazing. They're like, we should make this change or like yeah. continuously looking to see where, where can we make improvements, um, in all, in all areas to kind of eke out those kind of like 
additional 1% conversions, 1% sales um, in order to make, you know, continuous improvements. We could talk forever. Um, I, I'm sensitive to your time. It's been an hour. Um, this has been super valuable. And of course, you can connect with Lee Ron. Um, I think we can give out your email address, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, Lee Ron at, at incrementumdigital.com. Yep. And Incrementum Digital is his agency. Um, they're really, really the best. And, and I would uh, highly, highly recommend them. And, um, you know, uh, Liron, it's, it's such a pleasure to work with you and I'm excited we get to do content for some of your brands and, um, hopefully we get to do some more of that. And, you know, if, if you're looking for, um, you know, high end content, we're not for everybody, Butter is an agency that, um, you know, does premium, premium work. So like, as we talked about a little bit earlier in the podcast, if, um, that's something you're looking for, we're, we're, we'd be super excited to chat with you. So just, um, you know, I don't know where click somewhere on you know, do, do something, click something, go to butter.la. Yeah. And J Justin does like amazing, amazing work. Uh, like I said, he's done, he's done work for me on product videos, um, photography, uh, a plus content, just like does, does really good work. Um, and you know, now, now it's helping us also with video for, for, uh, for our website, like real, real pro, um, kind of work. So yeah, like, like Judson said, it's, it's premium, right? So it's not going to be the, the cheapest guy you're going to find to, to shoot a video, but, um, you know, it's going to be, um, really top notch when, when they're done working on it. So. Yeah. And we, and we have done lots of split tests around that area and it does, it does pay off. There's a, there's a payoff because not that many folks are doing it yet Yeah, absolutely. that way. So thank you so much for having me on.